Hey folks, welcome back to Bennett Science. Today we're going to be working on a giant laser protractor. Now you might ask, why do we need a giant laser protractor? We've got actual protractors that do the job pretty well. The problem here is in getting enough precision to make a measurement that I need for the Cavendish experiment. If you haven't been following the Cavendish videos, I'll uh, put these in a playlist, I'll link to earlier Cavendish videos, but if you have, you'll know that we are looking to measure some extremely small angles. One of these just isn't going to cut it. In fact, this one only marks off every five degrees. We're going to be looking at measuring something maybe down to the hundredth or even the thousandth of a degree. So we need something with a lot more precision, a lot more tiny markings. Imagine trying to fit a thousand little markings in between, well, 5,000 markings in between that little, those two little spaces. We just can't do it. So we need to grow this thing and we have to be able to measure this thing without touching it, without actually having the protractor inside the device. So we need to do this remotely and that's where the laser is gonna come in. So let me show you the, the plan. The plan is to have our, uh, our big bar with the two weights on it that's gonna be swiveling a little bit back and forth. It's gonna change how it swivels when we put those heavy masses here and here. We need to be able to measure how much that's swiveling or what angle that's at. So we're gonna put a little mirror right here at the center of that, uh, uh, of that arm, that swivel arm. And then we'll have a laser here that's shining right onto that mirror. There we go. And then that laser will be reflected by the mirror. It looks like it'll go off at some angle like this. And we need to be able to measure where does that, uh, that laser end up. Extend that line just a little bit. So we're going to make a big curved piece of wood and we'll do about a quarter of a circle here and it's going to be a circular shape and we're going to mark off uh, radians or par partial radians all the way along this thing. Now in order to, uh, um, to mark this we need it kind of standing up above the ground so there's going to be um, a bit of a wall here, a thin material wall that I can bend, and we're need, going to need some support system to hold that all in place. So we're going to have little pieces of 2x4 going all the way around here. Now this presents a little bit of a challenge because I have to figure out how much of an angle to cut each of these pieces at so they'll fit together nicely and how long to make each one so that we can get this, uh, this nice circular groove going all the way through. So there's a few things that we need to be able to, um, uh, to figure out before we make any cuts here. Um, I know that basically I'm gonna cut out pieces of two by four that have a little bit of an angle cut off from each side. And that if I put a bunch of those together, I'll get roughly a circular shape. So I need to make a decision on how many little pieces to make and then we can figure out uh, what size and what angle to cut these at. Let's just go with 10. 10 pieces for a quarter of a circle so it'd be a 40 sided polygon all together. Um, so one quarter of a circle and we're going to do that in 10 pieces. All right now if we look at the circle that we're going to be working with. Something like this. My first piece is going to be lined up about like that and have angles cut in like this. There we go. And my last piece will be set up something like this. At my angle again. Okay. If you look at the orientation, this one we'll say is facing this direction and this one is facing this direction. That's a 90 degree difference. And so I'm gonna do that in 10 steps. I need to make a 90 degree turn in 10 steps. So 90 degrees divided by 10 is gonna give us nine degrees for each um, little segment, each little turn. 
Now, if I cut a nine degree angle off of each side here and then put two of those together, I'd end up changing by 18 degrees. Uh, so I just wanna be able to cut them all to exactly the same size. So I'm gonna divide that again by two and find that I need a 4.5 degree angle on each one of those steps. 4.5 degrees cut off each end of the, the little piece of two by four. Now, as for the length of each of these, uh, basically I'm just gonna figure out the arc length and divide by 10. So the arc length is this whole distance here. And if it's been a while since geometry, we calculate the arc length by doing the radius times the angle, and this needs to be in radians. And so in this case, I've got mm, about 10 feet worth of space um, that I can use in my shop for this. So we'll just call that three meters. And we're doing a quarter of a circle, which is 90 degrees, but I need that in radians. So that is pi over two radians. So my arc length then is gonna be three pi over two which is 4.71 meters all the way around here. And I'm dividing that into, uh, um, into 10 pieces. So each piece then will be 4.71 meters divided by 10. So that's gonna be 0 0.471 meters or 47.1 centimeters. I started out by cutting everything to length on the miter saw. Then used a small block on my table saw sled to angle the board by four and a half degrees. And then set up another jig to get all these boards cut to the same angle and the same length. Next I drilled holes for pocket screws on the end of each board that will allow me to attach them together. And finally laid them out and screwed them together with pocket screws. Well, we got a little problem here. I uh, got the circle or the quarter circle um, made out in the two by fours and went to draw my circular arc on it. So right now I've got the two ends attached to a single point, so it should be the center of the circle, with three meter wires, and it should be a three meter radius circle, so we should have each one of those as a radius to the circle. And then with a third three meter wire, I have this piece of chalk so that I can mark out where that circle is on here but we run into a bit of a problem there. So it looks like I, uh, I missed the mark a little bit on cutting these two by fours. Uh, they're all just held in with a single screw, so I'm gonna loosen up the screws a little bit and just adjust everything. So once they're adjusted so that the arc is gonna be on top of the board all the way around, I'll add a couple extra pieces and, nail those in a place to keep it at its current shape. Well, after playing around with it a little bit, I found that the first uh, version I had of this where all the wood pieces were screwed together just wasn't working out the way that I wanted it to. The arc that I cut on the wood pieces, the angles that I cut into it were not quite right, so the arc that I needed to all fall on the wood pieces just didn't. So um, we're gonna do this a little more rudimentary and just plan on a little bit more cleanup in the garage afterward, I suppose. Um, I'm just gonna mark a circle on the floor of the garage with a marker and it turns out to make a giant protractor. You also have to have a giant compass. Mine is just a marker on the end of a three meter long string. You can see I did a similar arc when I was testing um, earlier. I've moved the whole assembly over that way a little bit so it doesn't get in the way of the garage quite as much for getting in and out. But, um, so it's, it's not quite gonna line up here. I'll put some construction adhesive down along that and then just put the boards on top of the construction adhesive 
they don't have to be perfectly aligned. The slot will be a nice arc because I'll cut it using the, uh, the wire marker. So draw this and get everything in place. All right, the paint mark is actually perfect. Doesn't screw up my garage quite as much. And now for the construction adhesive. Kind of wonder how hard this is to remove from concrete now. Guess I'll find out. Okay, time to place the boards. Now, gotta let this dry. We'll cut a groove in here to put our backboard on. Well, I'm nearly done with the big laser protractor. I just have to make the, the measurement gauge part of it now, which means lots and lots of little tiny marks. So I'm marking this out in radians. We have a three meter radius. So that means three meters on here, on this circular path, is gonna be one radian. Um, I'll put together a companion video to go with this, talking through how radians work, if you don't remember how that goes. So, I realized I don't have anything that measures in meters at home. Everything like that is at school, I guess. So everything is gonna be converted to inches at the beginning anyway. Um, so I'm gonna mark this out in every radian, and then every tenth of a radian, every hundredth of a radian, and every thousandth of a radian. Lots and lots of little marks. So. First off, marking off the, the whole radians, that's three meters. These pieces come in eight foot lengths, so I need a little bit more than nine feet before I get to the first radian. Um, so when I can mark that one on here at least, um, we're gonna go ahead and mark then every 10th of a meter. Now a 10th, or sorry, every 10th of a radian. Uh, a 10th of a radian on this is gonna be 0.3 meters, a 10th of the radius. Uh, 0.3 meters, 30 centimeters, so that is 11.81 inches. So all the way across, and I have a little line marked here, it's probably tough to tell on the camera. Um, I'll have 11.81 inches, and let's do it. All right, that's every tenth of a radian. Now let's do every hundredth of a radian. And uh, I, I realize I could just do the thousands first and then count every 10 and mark the t hundreds from there and count every hundred and mark the, thousand, uh, the tenths from there. But I think this way, if I miscount something, it'll be obvious to me because I won't get to the, the right spot every 10 or every 20 or whatever. Um, so this is a little built-in check for me. It requires a little more moving this thing back and forth and shifting my counterweight here, but uh, I, th I think it'll be worthwhile. So let's do every hundredth now. Um, every hundredth of a radian is going to be uh, three centimeters. So um, three meters for one radian, a hundredth of that is three centimeters. And for that, I've got, just got my caliper set at three centimeters. Um, and so I'll mark it with that first and then add pencil line to it afterward. Well, luck would have it, I actually found a uh, ruler that had uh, centimeters on it, so that made that last piece go a little bit faster. This one is the killer. This is the thousandths of a uh, radian, which is gonna be a whole, or sorry, a mark every three millimeters. And I've got uh, a couple thousand of these to do. So, uh, I made myself a little guide to speed this up. So I uh, drilled 11 holes with three millimeter spacing um, into this piece of wood and then cut it right along the holes. I have these uh, nicely spaced grooves, so I'm gonna speed it up a little bit, but uh, it's gonna take a while. I did the short one already. That one is about 
an hour and a half to get all the little marks in there. So probably a couple hours on this. Enjoy the high speed version. I got real time coming up. Well, that wasn't too bad. Only an hour. Got my technique down, I guess, and I don't have two little kids attacking me because it's late at night now. Uh, just as a side note, I'm not getting paid to say this or anything, but uh, I really appreciate listening to podcasts. I've been listening to Revisionist History by Malcolm Gladwell. It's just an excellent podcast. I'd highly recommend it if you have a long, boring task to accomplish and need some entertainment. So I've got this marked out, uh, about 14 or 1500 little marks uh, representing every thousandth of a radian. So we gotta get this in place and then mount the laser and the mirror and we're good to go. Well, here it is, the finished gauge, marked out to the thousandth of a radian, all the way around a quarter circle arc. I'm gonna sign off here for now. Next video will be the final setup for everything else. Get the laser in place, you gotta cover the little apparatus in plastic, and hang the rod and let it swing down, put the stationary or close to it, and ready to get the data. So, for that uh, coming up, we've got a little bit of a break coming up. We have a family wedding this weekend, but uh, we'll be back to it after that. Thanks very much. If you found this interesting, please do like, share, and subscribe. It really helps you find, uh, find new viewers. And uh, if nothing else, you have three hours, three and a half hours on the, uh, on the marking on that. Come on. That, that earns one life, right? Help me out. Thanks a lot. Take care. See you next time.